where we left off last time, we were talking about uh, the effect the sun and the moon have on the bulges, the solar bulge and the lunar bulge. And these predict most of what tides you see in a certain area. But they don't predict all of it. As a matter of fact, um, there are other factors that affect tides, and we call these complicating factors. Now, the two that we're going to talk about most in this class are declination, right here. Uh, it's a declination of the moon um, over uh, compared to the, the angle at which the Earth orbits the sun, as well as the elliptical um, nature of orbits. Sometimes we're closer or farther away from the sun or the moon. Um, these all have an effect on tides. There are actually some 400 plus uh, complicating factors that have been identified that affect tides, some in only a few areas, some elsewhere. And these include differences in the ocean floor. Some places um, have shallower ocean floors. Some places have deeper ocean floors. Um, e even along the coast, we have wider coastal margins, shallower. This causes different refraction. Remember, tides are waves. Even the effect of rivers and bays can have an effect on the tides in the area. So there are many, many complicating factors. Unfortunately, the vast majority are outside the scope of this class. Um, and even with predicting tides, even the best tide predictors like NOAA only take into account 60 some odd or so uh, to accurately predict tides, even though there's more than 400. So let's talk about the ones we're going to talk about. So the first one we're going to talk about is declination. Now, declination, the, the definition is right there. It's the distance above or below the equatorial plane. And this picture 9-11 is in your book. It may not be 9-11. But remember, the Earth is rotating around the Sun, and it's rotating around the Sun at an angle, 23.5 degrees, uh, basically through the, the hypothetical North Pole. At the same time the Earth is rotating around the Sun, the Moon is rotating around the Earth. Now, the, Earth, the Moon doesn't rotate over the equator, which is kind of sad because that's how we've drawn it all along up to this point. It actually rotates around the elliptic to the Sun, and I'll draw this on the next page. But... Um, it, it wobbles a little bit along its um, rotation around the Earth. And remember, it takes about a month, a little give or take, to rotate around the Earth. Um, and because it, it's five degrees above or below um, this ecliptic, we call it, and the Earth's tilt itself is 23.5 degrees um, off of the ecliptic, the moon can be as high as 28.5 degrees above the equator or as low as 28.5 degrees south of the equator. And it sort of wobbles back and forth um, over the course of its rotation. So let's look at how that happens. So you're going to have to forgive my horrible drawings. I will try to do them in class as well. So the first thing we kind of have to draw is the sun. So let me draw the sun. Hi, where's yellow? Sun has to be yellow. Um, so we have the sun. We'll pretend that's a round shape. Do 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 do. I look like I'm a five-year-old. And then we have um, the Earth's ecliptic orbit. And sometimes the Earth is closer or farther away. Um, either way, so here's our Earth. And it rotates at an angle. Um, that would be our North Pole. And at other points of the year, it's still at an angle. Notice it's at the same angle of both. That's a 23.5. And the moon actually rotates around the Earth sort of at almost the same plane. So it would be the moon here and the moon here. But from Earth, it looks like it's actually quite a bit above. If you were standing here, that would look really different. So let's look at that close up. Um, here's the Earth again. That one's a little more like a circle. And of course the Earth is green. And it's about at an angle. And that angle is 23.5. And this is in relation to its um, hypothetical orbit around the sun, right? Uh, let's erase that now that we drew that in. All right. And the equator would be about here. And the moon. Now, the moon rotates um, in an orbit related to the ecliptic, which would be right about here. It wobbles a little bit. So here would be the moon here. Here would be the moon here. And if you were to look at the line of latitude that that's at, or over here, um, it would be plus or minus 5 degrees, which means the maximum dec declination is 28.5. That means if you were standing here on Earth, it would look like that. So what does this mean? Um, let's start over again. So we have the Earth. And the circle on the last one was much better. And we have our angle, and we have the equator, and we have the moon. 
Let's say at this point it's here. Now the moon creates a bulge, a bulge of water, and we're going to color this in with greatly exaggerated. Do, 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 do. And the part closest to the moon, as you guys remember, is called the uh, zenith, and the part farthest away over here is called the nadir. All right. So during the, the course of its rotation, the moon will, will rotate around like this. Come back to where it was. And depending on where you are during, on the Earth, it'll be at a different angle. But let's talk about one day. So let's say that you're you, and you live at about mid-latitudes, which is here. You're very tall. And what you're experiencing is local high tide. And this high tide looks like it's about at your waist. Now, as the, the Earth rotates on its axis this way, um, you're going to rotate to low tide where you would be kind of behind. We can't see where you are. And then another six hours later, approximately, uh, you would be here. Same latitude, right? And there's you. We're going to pretend you're the same size. But if you notice, the depth of the bulge of water that you're in is actually much higher. Um, and this would be most extreme if you were at a slightly lower latitude. And this is why we get um, what we call semi-diurnal tides, where you have one large bulb. Um, bulge of water, oops, diurnal, um, and one smaller. These are both high tide, high tide here, high tide here. Would be low if you were standing here, and low if you were standing in the back. But the one that you experience, one is higher than the other. And we're going to talk about um, prediction of that, but I wanted you to see why that is. The same thing would happen um, here, too, in the southern hemisphere. Notice at the equator, they're basically the same. And we're, um, there, you don't really see much of a difference. We're going to talk about that as we go on and why that happens as well, too. So that was declination. So now we have to talk about elliptical orbits a little bit. And there's some terms you need to know here. Um, and I guess we should go by the roots. Um, I'll underline them. We have helion. Hel Oops, I kind of drew that out. Helion means sun. So perihelion is the point at which the Earth is closest to the sun. And um, for us, that tends to occur in January. Notice the distance. It's only about 92.2 million miles away, as opposed to aphelion. And I remember it as ap, like apart. Uh, aphelion is 94.5 million miles. We average them together. We get the 93 most people quote. And that occurs in July. Please, 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 if you're ever asked why we experience summer um, in the Northern Hemisphere, please don't say it's because we're closest to the sun. A lot of people say this like those idiot like jaywalking type things. The reason why we get the summer is because of the tilt of the Earth. Um, during this stage, the Earth is tilted towards the sun in the northern hemisphere, and it's tilted towards the sun in the southern hemisphere in um, July. Oop, I have it backwards. Anyway, this map is upside down. Uh, aphelion is when we're farthest away. And perihelion is when we're closest. We're going to use those terms again when we're talking about the moon, except instead of helion, we use G, where apogee is when the moon is farthest from the Earth, and the perigee is when the moon is closest to the Earth. Remember, when we're talking about gravitational force, distance matters. So the solar bulge is going to be largest when the Earth is at perihelion, and the lunar bulge will be largest when we're at perigee, conversely, least at the apos. Um, and this has a big effect on tidal range. Now, what happens when they're additive? This can actually be a really big deal. And one of the words you need to know is proxygen. Proxygen occurs when you have perigee, the moon closest to the Earth. At the same time, we have syzygy, which is, means we have the sun, the moon, and the Earth all on the line. And in 1962, we had a huge storm surge um, in Ash Wednesday, right around Easter time. And it, it was massive tides, uh, greater than 16 feet higher than normal. Now, there was also a storm um, but proxygen is a big deal. Now, we get very rare, this very rare proxygen occurs when not only do we have perigee and springtide, or perigee and syzygy, we have perigee, syzygy, and um, perihelion. And this only occurs every 1,600 years, but the maximum tidal ranges can be, in some places, 30 feet higher than normal. Um, we haven't seen one in a really long time. The next time should be around the year 3000. Um, it's been a while. But the, if a storm occurs during that, like, super proxygen, it's called by some people, that can be a really big deal. Now, all of these added together allow us to predict tides. Um, just using what we know about solar lunar bulges, as well as 
the ecliptic and declination, you can predict 90% of the tide ranges we actually see. Now this figure is in your book. Um, it's 9-13-ish. And these idealized tides <coughs> are ones that um, we're going to be working with a little bit. There's a lot of other factors, but we can account for most of them. So, let's talk about what we know about an idealized Earth. Um, we know that most places will have two high tides and two low tides every lunar day. Remember how long a lunar day is? It's 24 hours and 50 minutes. The difference, um, the when we were talking about how if you're at certain latitudes and the declination of the moon, there's a difference between the successive high tides where one is higher than the other. We call that diurnal inequality. And it's greatest when the moon is at its maximum declination, which is about 28.5 um, degrees either north or south. These are sometimes called tropical tides because the moon is close to being over the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, depending if it's in the northern and southern hemisphere. The other type of tides where we don't have this diurnal inequality is called equatorial tides because the moon is pretty close to being over the equator. Both of these will happen in the same lunar month or synodic month. Um, and we're going to practice drawing these later on when we get to tide patterns. And that's where we're going to stop for now.